हेलो वेलकम डॉक्टर सुषमा सिंह दिस साइड टुडे इन यूनिट 19 वेरियर एल्विन एंड जीएस घुरियस पर्सपेक्टिव ऑन ट्राइब्स लेट अस स्टार्ट आवर लेक्चर विद टॉपिक कंस्टिट्यूएंट असेंबली डिबेट्स एंड ट्राइबल पीपल द कंस्टिट्यूएंट असेंबली डिबेट्स टू डिड नॉट क्वेश्चन द वैलिडिटी ऑफ बोथ एक्सक्लूडेड एंड पार्शियली एक्सक्लूडेड एरियाज or the view that tribals were backward nor did they draw up the traditions of tribal and peasant movement to find out their mode of participation in the making of independent india they sought to deal with the problem that arises from the situation where cultural pluralism and political economic inequalities are co-present and co-exist namely of social justice in an inequitous social structure without re-examining the secular list policy of non-interference on question of social and cultural differences article 16 4 and article 335 were formulated to deal with this problem the debates on this and other related issues were within the theoretical framework of the liberal political tradition of governance left behind by the british the constitutional provisions for tribal people were formulated as a part of this debate it was argued that principles of political and economic democracy would create appropriate condition for justice these were incorporated in the directive principles of state policy in the discussion on the directive principles dr b r ambedkar said as i stated our constitution as a piece of mechanism lays down what is parliamentary democracy by parliamentary democracy we mean one man one vote the reason why we have established in this constitution a political democracy is because we do not want to install by any means whatsoever a perpetual dictatorship of any particular body of people while we have established political democracy it is also the desire that we should lay down our ideal of economic democracy we do not want merely to lay down a mechanism to enable people to come and capture power the constitution also wishes to lay down an idea before those who would be frame forming the government that ideal is economic democracy whereby so far as i am concerned i understand to mean one man one vote the question is have we got any fixed idea as to how we should bring about economic democracy there are various ways in which people believe economic democracy can be brought about there are those who believe in individualism as the best form of economic democracy there are those who believe in having a socialist state as the best form of economic democracy there are those who believe in the communist idea as the most perfect of economic democracy now having regard to the fact that there are various ways by which economic democracy may be brought about we have deliberately introduced in the language that we have used in the directive principles something which is not fixed or rigid one man one vote is the principle underlying political and economic democracy a vote therefore is a, an instrument to assert and define the political right to economic equality 
This is described in the right to property article 300A. Together they determine the economic and the political infrastructure of the industrial production process and the productive capacities for modern industrial work and enterprise. The democratic character of this infrastructure and of the process can be judged from its attitude to other tradition of work. They had no space for the coexistence and enrichment of plural mode of earning a livelihood with which people were familiar. In fact, it, it prescribes its annihilation. The nature of economic defined by this principle is not based on the work culture and the productive capacities of people. Does this enrich the skills to the productive and ensure a minimum subsistence? This principle thus needs to be recast. Productive capacity is not just the capabilities to do a job and be employed. It is the preparedness to cope with the traumas of alienation, anomies in the social sphere and with the uncertainties of living in the modern world of free liberal markets without either subjugating anybody or being subjugated. Such preparedness is the most essential requirements of self-rule. The political and the economic dimension of democracy is more than just one man and one vote. It is concerned with the condition for such preparedness. To understand their larger meaning, we need to consider the link between the political and economic rights and the productive capacity on one hand and the capacity to work and plural ways of life on the other. It is these links that constitute the idea of common good. Seen from this perspective, the directive principles do not resolve the contradiction between Article 16.4 and the Article 3.35. The former articles uphold equality of opportunities for all citizens in an equitous social structure where the power and goods are concentrated in the hands of a few. The latter supports the claim of the scheduled caste and scheduled tribes to services and posts. Debates on the Article 335 focused on whether or not there should be job reservations for scheduled caste and scheduled tribes. Some experts are reproduced here. Shri Pandit Thakur Das Bhargava there is absolutely no provision for reservations so far as members of dual caste and dual tribes are concerned. The safeguard given by law to this class is contained in Article 335, which says the claims of the members of the dual caste and dual tribes shall be taken into consideration consistently with the maintenance of the efficiency of administration. In the making of appointment to the services and post in connection with the affairs of the unions or of the state. Therefore, one thing is absolutely clear that no reservation was meant to be made for the members of the stool caste and stool tribes as such. I remember that in the subcommittee of the minority committee this matter came up and then we decided that there should be no reservation at all. Now, as if by the back door, by smuggling this reservation for dual caste and dual tribes is being inserted in clause 4 of Article 320. My submission is when there is a positive command of the constitution to the members of the Public Service Commission which they must obey that the claims of the members of the stool caste and stool tribes must be considered 
consistently with the maintenance of the efficiency of the administration this provision would be useless and also in a manner i should say this takes away the effect of article 335 to an extent i am therefore anxious that so far as the scheduled caste and the tribes are concerned their claims must be considered with the regard to all appointments not only with the regard to the reserved appointments because if there are reserved it means that their claims will be considered the likelihood is that their claims would be confined only to the reserved post and in regard to their post their claim will not be considered now as the house knows the provision contained in article 16 clause 4 is a sort of a negative provision to counterpose the equality of opportunities for all citizens some of whom are very much developed and others not so developed and provision is made that state is not prevented from making any provision for the reservation of appointments or post supposing no post are reserved the provision will neither benefit the backward class nor any other class when the house has not decided reservation of post i do not think we are justified in having in this clause for of contingency for which reservation could be made when the house has decided once for all that no reservation is to be made then these words clause for give rise to that impression that reservation is possible shri tt krishnamachari will the honorable member please say how article 335 could be implemented shri pandit thakur das bhargava can it only be implemented by reservation if that is so why did we not so decide shri r k sindhwa mr president i have had the view that if anybody deserves protection or special rights or privileges it is the scheduled caste only and for the reason that i frequently stated that we have done certain injustice to that class and for the purpose of undoing that injustice we specially gave them this protection i do not approve of my friend deshmukh's proposal to introduce the word backward class i strongly oppose it although the words backward class are there i am obliged to reluctantly accept it and if i had my way i would have said that there shall be no such things as backward classes shri mahavir tyagi why introduce the communal virus into another article that representations of the scheduled caste shall be so and so and the manner of giving it shall be such and such that the rules of giving this representation in the services or post to the scheduled caste shall not be made in consultation with the public service and so on all this i say is absolutely unnecessary and surely it does not benefit the scheduled caste people at all some of us felt that the special reservation was forced against their wishes but then we sh- were told that it was only a directive articles and that it directs the policy of future government in these debates the question of protection was addressed without reference to the larger question of the nature of the economy and the place of the marginalized people in it 
there was no stock taking of either the state of the economy that the british rulers left behind or of the reserves of material and cultural capital with the people for this reason it was not possible to discuss the path of self reliant development and progress india was to follow the welfare that the directive principles seek to promote define individual and collective well-being without considering its relation to the work culture and productive capacities of people for instance law and the prevalent the alienation of land among us tribes are not sufficient for economic and political democracy in addition what is required is the freedom to define land and other means of production in accordance with their tradition of work and in the context of industrial production system accordingly tribal protest can be seen as assertion of their right not only to land but also to the universe of the forest as their living space to their work culture an important component of which is shifting cultivation and to their world view these rights are a precondition for a sense of belonging which is the most essential for their democratic participation in constructing a future it is not dependent on whether this mode of cultivation conforms to the standards of scientific rationality and development the idea of welfare and social justice is premised on the right to property which cannot ensure a sense of belongingness it is thus of crucial importance to understand the form and content of the notion of political and economic democracy itself in pursuance of the directive principles of state policy article 300 a says that the state can acquire land to promote public interest persons not to be deprived of property save by the authority of law no person shall be deprived of his property save by law in the draft constitution this was article 24 we, which we will discuss further in next le- lecture thanks for listening